¿Dónde está? Ya. Hey! Hello, my name is Svante Schubert, and I'd like to talk about the new audio toolkit from the Document Foundation. Um, it's not that new. Um, it exists more than 10 years, and it was donated by Oracle to Apache first, and now we moved it from Apache to um, the Document Foundation. And um, I'm from Star Division earlier. I started 1999, October 1999, with uh, Star Division, but I closely never worked with Star Division or Star Office, uh, uh, Open Office, Libre Office, but always with web tops, uh, web offices. We, uh, it's called Sun Web Top area. So I worked on two web offices during the Star Division, Sun, Microsoft, Oracle time and later on with open exchange on a third web office and uh, as a freelancer. And I'm currently continuing as a freelancer mostly, but I public money to, to working on the Soviet toolkit and on other things. So what is the only toolkit about? Well, it's a tool, a hammer. <laughs> so it's not a silver bullet, <laughs> but at least it's a big hammer. Um, it was stolen, <laughs> just to mention it. Okay, so um, the it's a toolkit, so it's meaning it's not a single tool, but it's a set of tools. And these tools are meant for developers. Uh, they are mainly not for the end users. The, they don't, without the one exception, uh, they don't have a front end. Yes, only the ODF. <coughs> oh, sorry. Here we go. The ODF validator. Yes, is something with a, with a front end with uh, Java server faces, I believe, using those pages. So I'm not sure one of those. And uh, if, you, if you download the source, it's all open source, it's in Java, it's uh, J2, JEE, and uh, it's part of this uh, <coughs> web archive, which you can put on your local Tomcat or uh, whatever web server you, you might want to use web application. Uh, then you can get the same, closely the same, I guess, this uh, LibreOffice because they're hosting it, we're hosting it. So, uh, but you get the same out of the box, but you can use it also, also from command line. So what is an ODF validator? The ODF format is a standard, right? And the standard is nothing like a recipe, a blueprint, where all applications have to conform. And uh, the blueprint recipe is like, you want to bake, bake a cake and they have to be all the same, right? It, uh, so, um, and it's defining um, different levels, like uh, the package, you, you heard it maybe before, that the ODF document is just a zip. Okay. If you change the suffix to zip and double click or unzip it, then you get a lot of files, right? You can you can take a look into it. You see the, the pictures. You see a lot of XML. There's always a content XML, a style XML, and uh, something like a content table called the manifest. Okay. And this validator um, gives you clues about what's what's the problem. Sometimes when you cannot open a document, you might take a look into the validator and see if there's any any problem. In yeah, and there are different versions of ODF as well. ODF 2 is the current existing version, and ODF 3 is the uh, only version. So, what other tools exist at the ODF toolkit? So, um, of course, the, as I said, the online validator. And the other use cases is, um, well, it's a bit um, at this time. You ever heard about Excel? Who ever heard about Excel T? XSL running. There are some scripts you transfer one XML to the other, but, huh, one. <laughs> but you have to use. XML, but the XML is within the document, so you would have to unzip it. And this XLT runner is just a usability tool so that you can just give the ODF document, uh, the ODT or whatever, ODT, ODP, into this transformation without the need to unpacking it, right? It's just a very simple single use case, very narrow. Um, and the other thing is the main thing, where it's the most people on the developer list that are going through this. Whenever you have to edit the document on a server in a cloud, you you know this um, is the camps. It's used by the ODF DOM. Oh, I missed the name. The ODF DOM is that for, and you um, you have no layout. You won't see the page. But if you know the XML and you know you've got, for instance, the content from uh, from customers from a, a database, and you try to insert it, or you want to extract only the text data to translate it and merge it back then this is exactly what uh, what you want. And the last thing, and uh, to me the most important, is for collaboration. And um, we did not use it in that way um, for Sun. In Sun we, we simply transformed the ODT to an HTML page and put it, to, uh, send it to the mobile, edited it and send it back. 
but this will not work if you have many people working on the same file, because then you have many different HTML files and you have problems with merging. This is a, a core problem they can uh, talk you afterwards. So, how does the architecture look like? That's in the Golden Temple, by the way. <laughs> and um, yes, architecture of software is similar to, to buildings, right? You have to ba uh, have a stable basement, and you have some principle. Other, uh, otherwise, sooner or later, the building crashes down. <laughs> so, um, what are the modules? So, first of all, we have this ODF DOM. This is the core part, right? And um, I said dependencies because um, we don't want to build everything by hand, yes? There's this um, ODF specification, this recipe blueprint, and it tells you exactly how the XML should look like. It's a grammar, right? Um, it's like um, the office body have to have a child office text if it's a text document, yes? So all this is written in the grammar, and the source generator takes this grammar and generates as much from the ODF form as possible. So you don't have to know about these 600 XML elements and 1,200 XML attributes, which is uh, which are hard to remember, and uh, it tells you exactly uh, where you can add something. Um, you might heard something similar that's called Java XML binding YAXP, but, um, and that is but only for the W3C XML schema. It's a different grammar, <laughs> and uh, ODF using Relax and G grammar, which is um, um, Relax and G is with a oh, I forgot his name, a Japanese guy as well, who, who invented that. And it's for me, to me, easier to read. So um, that is the, the core part. And dependent on that is the ODF validator. It simply opens the document he wants to check in the, um, with this ODF DOM. And um, when we ever find a problem in the, by loading it, we have the error messages already in, right? And we simply collect them and um, list them for the other validator. So um, it's basically built in because, um, yes, all the validation rules, there are three things in the specification. They say may, they say should, and they say must or shall, right? And um, may, you can do it. And if uh, should is a warning if you don't use, and must is, you have to do it, otherwise it's an error, okay? And the last thing is a fatal error, like um, we tested it, we load an image, right? You cannot load a, an image as an ODF. That's, that's a fatal error, right? Um, because there's no manifest, and it gives you the right, um, right um, problems, the right things. Another thing is um, the XLT runner, of course, it uses the um, ODF DOM as well to um, unzip the XML. So, and the last thing is the simple API. There was a fork from IBM, and uh, we deprecated it now. Uh, it will be in the next release, the first release on the, the tool, or the toolkit, but um, there's a lot of source code duplication, and uh, we don't agree with some of the design ideas. There's a lot, lot of copying from all of them because they thought, oh, we fork and we will never come back again, and then we came again, and we have a lot of copies. And, and I believe we have to generate more. But the idea with a simple API is that we have um, the user view uh, on the document because you don't want to deal with uh, 600 elements and 1,200 uh, attributes. You want to have say, oh, open the text document, insert a paragraph, insert this text, insert an image. That's the width of the image. So like, you would tell me on the phone what I'd have to do, okay? And this is the semantic, the human semantic. Um, this should be the, the highest API. And this is, if you take a look now, we try to dive into ODF DOM, DOM how this is uh, layered, then we have this package layer, which takes care of unzipping and uh, taking the content table, um, if everything is correct there, putting the mind types into it, then this generated XML layer, and on top that we have to write manually, because it's not in the specification, um, this is what I just said, uh, what you would uh, tell your mom on the phone, right? Um, look at the third paragraph, the second word, yeah? or we would say the second letter, we would count the letters, okay? So, um, and from this current view, I hope that it become that in the future. Um, so the first layer is the lowest layer, and this should be something like a private layer, and this should be something um, which should be exchanged among office applications, because, um, Opposed to an HTML browser, we have no guarantee that any application, ODF application, knows anything about a DOM, like LibreOffice, for instance. Yes, you have no idea about what elements exist uh, at runtime. As soon as you load it, they're gone, 
right? You have a different runtime model. There's these only uni objects. But the interoperability of browsers happens because they have a DOM API, yes? That's the reason why you can have a, a JavaScript running on the DOM tree in various browsers, okay? And have something like the asset test, where you simply load the document and the test is within. This does not exist, unfortunately, for office application, this kind of interoperability of, of an API. So uh, that's the reason why macros only work with one application, not the others. This is something that is wishable for me to, to fix or change. So I would like to f uh, focus now on the um, semantic API. And um, I will come, make a step backwards and say about the problem that we are in. Sometimes we have a problem, we don't realize we have a problem we, because we always do it that way. So most of the file formats we're using are from the 18th. So like PDF, all the office formats, um, start in which Star Office came from the 80s, Microsoft Office came from the 80s. And at that time, we were working on one person, as one person on a, on a laptop, on a laptop, no, sorry. That <laughs> 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 was big. <laughs> on, on, on a single machine, right? And we had floppy disks, right? And sometimes with modem, but we have to click in and do really to get to get the internet connection right, <laughs> and then oh, it's expensive, so turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> yes, and uh, so that was our kind of, of working, of collaborating, right? But um, mostly with floppy disks. Yeah, I've got my games on the floppy disk and change it on the on the uh, playground, yes, um, schoolyard, yes. So um, that was a collaboration, and we, we made it for uh, for this reason. And nowadays, well, the requirements have changed. So nowadays, everyone has multiple machines because we have a smartphone and, and a laptop. No, yes. <laughs> so um, we, we are copyrighted with ourselves, even, yes. And the problem is that if you're changing documents, like, um, and you want to have one single document in the end, like, we all want to set a birthday uh, invitation, or we all want to have an application for government money, and we work on a team on this contract, right, on this application. So everybody's um, coming back to the old picture. I give you floppy disks, and you edit your proposals and give back the floppy disk. And on Monday, I've got a desk up on, on, on my desk, there's a pile of floppy disk, and I have to merge everything in a single file. That's horrible, right? That's the reason why Google Docs is like quite, ex, um, quite um, successful. Um, but you cannot work with Google Docs and other applications, right? It's, uh, it's proprietary behind the walls. And LibreOffice Online is um, only working on one document, so we all have to work at the same time on this document, okay? So this is something that's problematic. And the, the thing is, when I'm sitting there with all my disk, all the floppy disk on my table, the question is, what have you changed, right? Because this is what I have to know. That's all I'm interested in. So, but I cannot answer this question by, uh, in an interoperable way. Like, there's no blueprint about what is a change. We only standardize the old world HTML and ODF and all the office formats what is the full file format? We cannot explain what a change is. Even change tracking does nothing know about a change. It's simply saving this change area as a black box aside, okay? And if you reject a change, it simply put it back in. It doesn't know anything about it. So there's a problem. I just wanted to point out um, um, there's a problem. And just a second. So what, what can we do? So this problem is partly solved. Uh, who is a software developer, by the way? All oh, right. So software developers have um, um, source code, oh, sorry, said versioning systems. Okay. Ever anybody heard about GitHub? GitHub, right? All right. That's good. Like GitHub. GitHub is um, a front end for Git. It's a versioning system which allows you to collaborate um, on the same source code, right? We do not have to have one, let's say, Eclipse running at the same time that was like LibreOffice Online, and we log in and can, can work on the same time, but we can work offline and dispatch only the changes by sending the line diffs, okay? Line diff doesn't work here because, um, you know, the zipped XML can be in one long line or can have different, uh, different um, line breaks, so we don't trust the syntax. We go on the semantic level, right? So we have not so much noise. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to have the same functionality like software developers have, like we're working on branches, we have feature branches, or we can go offline and merge things back. And we, um, 
of course, if you're working collaborating like Google Docs, they don't send the documents around. That would be ridiculous, right? If you work on a very large document with every keystroke, if the document would be dispatched, it would be terrible. So they sending changes as well, right? So, um, but they are not standardized, and um, and this is the the question: How can we can we solve it? And just because we have now internet, mail, and Dropbox, is similar like we have very fast floppy disk. It's the same problem, just very very fast. Okay, it doesn't solve anything. Just to, to mention that we have a problem here. So what can we do, or what should it look like first? So let's think about having an internal collaboration. Like we have a LibreOffice, and we are collaborating now with Google Docs and uh, Microsoft Office, and. They are all our audio applications. They all can load the full document, but we do not want to change, send the floppy disk, right? We want to tell them, oh, by the way, I have a new uh, fourth, par fourth paragraph, right? I inserted it here right now, yes? And I just dispatched not the full document floppy disk, but the change, okay? And as you see, let's assume that we have standardized it. Um, I try to. Um, I'm, I'm still the chair of this OASIS subcommittee, Advanced Document Collaboration. But as I say, uh, what should I say? It's uh, like a kingdom without land. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, hibernating because we need implementations, and um, there's a lack of implementations. I assume it's because um, in the 80s um, we we have a different design. We have the floppy disk design in mind, and to switch everything now to a different design is very very hard, and uh, it, it's hard to change. Um, software from, from the total. Uh, some leading developer, I won't name now, but he told me, oh, that's a good idea. Why haven't you told me 20 years ago? <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay, so much for that. And, okay, and there are other ways goes wrong. He says, the word, um, I've got the second paragraph blue, and then both are merged. And he just, or he or she, <laughs> um, <laughs> takes, sorry, <laughs> um, just takes the changes, the merging in, right? It's, um, I can explain a little thing. It happens. Um, it should happen that it uh, doesn't matter if this comes first or that comes first. So if, if this comes first, um, it's the second. Wait a minute. Second paragraph. Group. No, it's uh, always the same. Sorry, I, I was confused. Yes, I don't go into it. It's um, um, I wanted to um, confuse you with too much information or on the underlying thing. But it's quite quite easy actually how to work. And it's not totally a vision. So what we have now, coming up with the next version, not the next version, the next, um, uh, we are releasing a 0 0.9.0, 0, right? That's this uh, version of, um, that we had similar in Apache. And the 1.0.0 0, 0 snapshot, is currently here on my bunch on GitHub, that uh, will come soon, has something that transforms a document into equivalent list of changes, right? So, um, it's just like, of course, um, the full document is similar as if you've written from top to, uh, from down, uh, top to, to bottom, okay? And why we're doing this? Because the only, I, the, if we only talk in changes, right, and we don't know longer anything about the documents, it's far easier to, to answer the question, what have you changed? So, it's not only doing this to, to enter the realm of uh, changes, but it also allows you to get new changes back, right? To um, merge them into the document and save them. So, and that is exactly what Open Exchange is using for their web office. They are um, exchanging between the web office these these changes. And um, I will just give you a quick look on this. You know that here is a zipped XML, and because there uh, the data is changed, exchanged between web offices, um, the data language is called JSON. Ever heard about JSON? Who has heard about JSON? Okay. Um, JSON is, I would say, it has advantages and disadvantages. To me, it's harder to read. You can, um, you can see about it as a, as a tree of maps and arrays and data, okay? <laughs> to, to, to explain it in some, uh, a, sentence, a sentence. So let me, oops, sorry. Show you quickly. Wait a minute. Okay. I have to wait a minute. Here we go. I got it. Here is the. No, it's not. <laughs> now I got a problem. Um, then I wasn't. I do it later at the end. Okay. So we do the presentation first, and then uh, um, because I I wanted to have the presentation of you, and so I have two image, um, two presentation windows. 
and now I'm running into the trap that I cannot show you my example. And beginner's mistake. So, show you later. Let's continue. Uh, this is the second last slide already, but um, I think one of the most complicated because now I'm telling you what I'm um, um, what I'm trying to do. So I already have what I want to do achieve is now to um, very good fucking this is to um, give an example about this um, change that are running because now everything is in the back end. No user can any uh, can work with this change that in the back. So I would like to add um, connect some front ends. And to show the power of this, I would like to collect a LibreOffice. The main work here is not done by myself because, as I said, I always work in web offices. And uh, Torsten Bar Barons and uh, Michael Stahl would like to <laughs> would like to a phrase I cannot phrase here, yeah. but they they would they want to take a look into it and try to make a prototype of that so we can work. And we even load a full ODF document like a specification, like a um, um, document that is very powerful and features in a text document. So what we're doing is every line is a paragraph and then there's the text. If there's anything else like a table image, it's been because a list of changes, you just take these changes out and then somebody edits the text and you merge these changes back in with all the tables back in because you're no longer saving everything but you're merging in. By this, there's no longer filter filter of, um, of features you do not know, you, even as a text editor, you might load ODT, edit ODT, at least the text and paragraphs, and save it without um, losing features like tables or images, okay? Um, so you can edit a five, it's an, um, it's an editor from, uh, open source editor from Poland, which, uh, which of course then have, um, has all these table and a lot of stuff, it doesn't have page support, but it used internally changes as well. So what I'm trying to do is map the changes I know from ODF to their changes and make them load. And they're willing to provide me an interface. And that is what I'm applying for next winter for prototype font again. Now, the earlier work was already sponsored by prototype. I wrote it above, but I forgot to mention. Prototype is some German font um, by the Ministry of Research for um, half a year of um, working on open source software and that has been spent for the ODF toolkit once to, to create this mapping back and forth and now I would love to, to add a front end to let it work. So um, there are some resources page left so you can take a look at it. Of course um, the most important is the, where we are but we're still in progress. There's uh, um, something to the validator of course. The, the documentation has to be updated. And this is, uh, there are a lot of broken links yet. This is just preliminary. I, I'm fine yet. Um, I haven't finished, I'm sorry. I was uh, delayed by, by other tasks. But I will, I hope to do it uh, yesterday, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, it will be updated very soon, okay? I'm sorry for the um, work in progress date. Are there any questions? Thank you, first. While I'm answering, I'm trying to fix the problem within multiple slides. <laughs> Where is it? Any questions? No? I have a question. Oh, yes, please. Um, are you maintaining also online by data, right? Huh? Would you have validated also you have maintained? Um, are, are you maintaining the OBF online validator? Ah, the online it? validator. The online validator is just a, a website, um, a web application server or web server from um, from the TDF, mm -hmm. where the uh, original well, is, is not from TDF. And but but now, original is not from TDF, but now TDF is Yeah, exactly, the, exactly. Yes. Of it. Earlier they used the, the um, resource bundle from Apache, and um, now they are um, now they, they own it as well. But we own it. Okay. Oh, just a second. Any any more questions? Otherwise, yes, please. Uh, you mentioned about RTM uh, validator. Uh, what what uh, issue can we uh, uh, can we know if we uh, 
submit a document in yep. audio creator and if uh, what kind of mistakes can be uh, can be detected? Yes. Um, there's one specification for the package, like if the zip, for instance, the, in the beginning of the zip, if you just, um, there have to be the mime type, which should not be um, compressed. So for instance, if you um, drag and drop the zip, as the ODF, doc, uh, ODF document, into a text editor, you will see in the front uh, the mime type. If this is not the case, you will get an error, for instance. Or if the content table contains something that's not existent. That is the package uh, format level uh, problems. And uh, already also signature and encryption is uh, part of the package layer, yes? And um, on the higher level, the next level is the XML. There are problems from, uh, if the XML is not the right order, like you have to have A, B, C, and it's differently all of the elements. Or um, also the formula, the math uh, for calc, um, are in their own specification. So whenever there's something, but I'm not sure that we are, we're not, there's a different uh, validation for the formula, that we're not using the validation for that. But everything that has to do with the package and the XML, right, that you get received out of the box. Hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I haven't found it earlier. <laughs> so, Okay, I guess I have to... Okay, let's see. The, um, what I wanted to show you is the document and the JSON uh, side by side. But you find it at my, uh, on the GitHub branch that I showed you, and you can load both, uh, and you compare it side by side. And I wanted to show the different ways that, um, that the JSON is just a list of orders, like commands, um, which is equivalent to the document, yes? And, um, sometimes it's easier to extract information like give me all the text from from this and um, the other thing that's very really benefit uh, of these um, operations is sometimes a single semantic use change like uh, like a change from a user like uh, on this paragraph I would like to switch the layout from horizontal to vertical or the other way around might have um, four different changes in the document um, in on the paragraph, for instance, on the paragraph style, that's the content XML, and the paragraph style refers to the styles XML, and there's the page style, and then it refers to the page style, uh, page properties. So, um, so a single change of user might have four changes in the XML, and um, this gives a lot of noise and complexity. And this semantic view of it makes it far easier, and um, it. When it comes to merging, you can move these like commits. You can do something like a git rebase or something, but you can move changes around this queue of documents. But um, I didn't want to go too deep into this um, problem already. But it's it's very nice, and um, if this working like you can collaborate with an HTML editor on, on ODF with, um, or LibreOffice to, to, to connect it to, to GitHub um, and store ODF in a branch and tell them, hey, what's the difference between this document and document, and you get these changes out, right? That would be um, a huge benefit, I believe. Yeah? Okay. Thank you for listening. Oh, what question? I have a question. Yes. Yeah, so you figured out how, you found out the problem, and then you figured out how to solve the problem. Yeah. So you found out the problem of how to manage and floppy picks, you said. Yes. And if we have to work remotely, we have to also deal with space. Right? Space like. Um, so if we have to work remotely, like mm -hmm. online editing is easier, convenient for people. Mm -hmm. You don't have to download, you just can do online. Mm -hmm. But if we have to work remotely, we have to start dealing with space on the system and so forth. But my main question is what is the main advantage of this year um, to compare to online? What is the main advantage? You Why question? should we keep? Is it to LibreOffice online? Yes. To, especially? Okay, okay, okay. To, um, so LibreOffice, the question was, what's the advantage of um, this approach um, versus LibreOffice online? Um, let, me, let me compare it with, with, with GitHub, okay? Um, if we had LibreOffice online would be something like you would connect to GitHub and you connect to the same website, you can go there 
and edit the source code all together on the same on the same page. But you have to be online and uh, uh, log into it. Okay, that is fine. Um, but you um, you have to trust the other. Okay, like if we are two companies and we do not trust trust each other, we, we, I want to. Uh, I need to sell my company to you and I have to work on a contract, yes? Then um, we, and your lawyers and my lawyers always ping pong the document, yes? Then I, I would like to know the changes, but I don't want to work with you um, online on the same document, okay? Let me, s okay, that was an example, but um, I can work, the advantages you can work offline, there are several advantages. You can merge, yes? And you can work on branches. You can have different versions of a document, and 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 um, like in software, move fixes around branches. It's much more sophisticated. Maybe not for the for the end user, but uh, the technical people beyond can build much more powerful features on that. Uh, LibreOffice uh, Libre, Libre Office Online is is achieve a lot with little effort. This requires a lot more efforts, but allows features that will never be possible when when you not go to the change level okay so a lot of features are wonderful a lot of use cases are wonderful don't touch it leave off, leave off online is great um, but if you want to achieve, achieve everything and go to further goals yes then we have to think uh, think it over yeah Okay, I think I'm out of time now. Yeah. Thank you.